What's up guys? I'm here today to talk to you about one of my favorite bands ever, the Turnpike Troubadours. They are six dudes based out of Oklahoma and they've mastered this red dirt Texas country rock sound which I'm absolutely in love with. Um, they've been releasing music independently and fall outside of the Nashville pop country radio bubble. Um, I've been listening to them for the past few years and um, I've kind of gone through these waves of obsession where at first I listened to them mostly for their sound. I just liked the fun, upbeat nature of their songs. But then later, as I um, continued listening to the lyrics, I realized how truly incredible the songwriting is. I think Evan Felker is a genius when it comes to writing songs and every single lyric is just so perfectly chosen to match the music and paint a vivid scene through the use of specific details. So the Turnpike Troubadours have released a total of 46 songs across four albums from 2010 to 2017 and I honestly love every single song. What I think is really cool is that their sound has remained really consistent across the four albums. Um, you get the sense that the songs are somehow connected to each other and part of this like greater cohesive universe through the use of recurring characters. Another thing I find really cool about the Turnpike Troubadours is the strange juxtaposition between how the songs sound and what they're about. If you only listen to the music, you would think that these songs are like super happy, they're like really upbeat and um, exciting. But once you start listening to the words, you realize that they're actually really dark, sad, and depressing. Um, they basically make you want to dance and cry at the same time. I find upbeat sad songs a bit more exciting and interesting than, you know, a slow sad song or an upbeat happy song just because it's so unexpected. Um, you can tell that the Turnpike Troubadours created these songs to perform live. And because sadness is usually a very quiet personal experience, they kind of flip that upside down and take the sadness and bring it out into the light as this shared universal human experience, which I find really beautiful. Some common themes in their songs are um, heartbreak, loneliness, nostalgia, restlessness, and ordinary small town life in Oklahoma. They paradoxically recognize that we all feel lost and lonely on the inside, and therefore they unite us in this feeling so that we no longer feel as lost and lonely. Um, their songs are deeply personal, yet universal at the same time. As you may already know, um, the Turnpike Troubadours are currently on an indefinite hiatus, um, possibly due to Evan's alcoholism. So I've sadly come to terms with the fact that I may never see another live performance or hear new music from them. But part of me still hopes and prays that Evan will recover and be able to come back to the world and give us even more beautiful music. But in the meantime, this is my take on how every Turnpike Troubadour song is connected. Okay, I have a question. Who the fuck is Lori? Lori is the most mentioned character of any Turnpike Troubadour song. Okay, actually she's only mentioned my name in three songs in three separate albums, but I personally believe that there are actually 20 songs about her across all four albums. Disclaimer, this is just my personal interpretation and not the only interpretation or what the artist originally intended. So let's start with the facts about Lori. This is the stuff you can't argue with me on. Lori is first introduced in Good Lord Lori, where you learn that she is the dark-haired daughter of Southwest Arkansas with green eyes and black hair brown from the summer sun. We learn that she and the narrator, who I'm just gonna call Evan because he wrote most of these songs, and it's a lot easier to say than the narrator. Um, I'm not saying this is actually him in real life, though it could be, but I don't think Lori is like a real person or anything. Um, she's more like a metaphor. Anyways, we learn that Lori and the, and the narrator Evan are in love despite the disapproval of her family who act like they're rich and too good for him. But then he messes up and she breaks up with him, um, but he still loves her. Then in The Mercury, which is about this crazy bar scene, um, Lori is described as just another small town kid with a red bandana, raven hair, and a plain white tee. Finally, in The House Fire, we learn that Lori has a child with the narrator, 
um, as they escape their burning house. To me, Lori represents this perfect dream girl that Evan never imagined he would ever have. She's carefree, wild, strong, and independent. They fall in love in their teenage years and move to the city to try to build a life together. Um, but when they break up, he goes back home to the country and spends a lot of time on the road. However, he never really gets over her as there's a bunch of songs about him missing her, trying to win her back, and reflecting on the relationship. During this time, he meets Doreen, who's this completely other girl who I'll talk about later. Meanwhile, Lori moves on with her life and starts a family, and they pretty much become strangers. But then, there's a few songs about them reuniting after a long time apart. There's scenes where Lori walks back into the doorway of Evan's life, and there's this little glimmer of hope that they will get back together, which is the happy ending we all want. Um, but we never really find out the fate of Evan and Lori, and whether they end up together is this open-ended question, which strangely parallels the fate of the Turnpike Troubadours and Evan, and whether he's the real Evan, and whether he's still going to keep on writing music to answer these questions we have. Tell us more about Lori! So for now, we're just stuck in this infinite state of uncertainty. So Lori is first introduced on the very first song on the very first album, Every Girl. It's pretty much the only purely happy song about her, um, describing her quirks and how she's perfect in her imperfections. Um, the first line is, she was born in the morning, late October San Antone, oh she's every girl I've ever known. Then in 7 and 7, Evan is older and reflecting back on the past. We learned that they met at 17 and they used to run wild and sleep on the floor and he was the boy that her mama warned her about. But now they're complete strangers and he sees her from afar with her husband and child in the supermarket aisle. That rhymes, sort of. Um, she's still this perfect picture of strength, grace, and beauty and he's just a fool and he's nobody. In The Bird Hunters, which is about Evan hunting with his dog and his childhood friend Danny, um, reflecting back on the failed relationship with Lori, we learned that he moved with her to Tulsa and they fell in love at a rodeo dance. But while things are still good, Evan begins to sense that things are about to go south. Tornado Warning is this super happy, upbeat song about sitting on the front porch with Lori while a tornado rolls in. It's about the calm before the storm in their relationship. In The Mercury, we learn that her kind of lovin' is a little like a fist fight. He says, girl, I know you're gonna wreck this town. Won't you tell me where to be when the walls start falling? Finally, the breakup scene officially happens in Good Lord Lori, where we learn that Lori is the one who ends the relationship because of Evan. He says, I had good intentions till I had too many. I was stupid, I suppose. Lori tells him, I wonder what we ever went through all this trouble for. You ain't half of who I thought you was, and this ain't fun no more. He says, guess her folks are right. She tells him to go back home to Cherokee County with nothing but a razor and a comb and the bird hunters. Danny, his childhood friend, tries to comfort him by saying, if you'd married that girl, you'd have married her family. You dodged a bullet, my friend. And down here, I think it's told from Danny's perspective, comforting Evan, telling him he's gonna be all right. Strangely enough, there are some clues like the Auto 5 Browning shotgun and the old logging roads that Danny goes on to marry Lori and have a child with her. Um, and the house fire is told from Danny's perspective. They could be the husband and child in 7 and 7, but you know, their house ends up burning down and they lose everything, which could be a metaphor for their relationship and ultimately brings Evan and Lori back together. But in the meantime, we get this series of 10 unique, beautifully written songs where Evan reflects back on the relationship with Lori and how it's broken him because he still loves her even though she no longer cares for him. Only three of them are actually slow and sad. Um, the first one, a little song, he goes, what a fool to figure that forever you'd be mine. And I love the line where he goes, well you don't want me anymore. It's just so filled with passion and longing. And fall out of love, he asks a bunch of existential questions. How do you fall out of love? Why did it end up so sad? How could you lose such a thing? How does a person just change? In Diamonds and Gasoline, he's lost and restless on the road, not knowing where to go. He asks, is it time I should be moving? Is it time I should settle down? And the rest of the songs are surprisingly super happy and upbeat. In Down on Washington, he goes, I'm just a fool, but I've loved you all along. 
and says, I'd steal you in a heartbeat if the choice were up to me. He's all alone in his misery in a whole damn town, where the whole town has pretty much taken Lori's side. And quit while I'm ahead, he's like completely fucked up and desperate for her love. He says, I'm busted, broke, bent, beat, and about halfway to dead. In Long Drive Home, he says, what he'll miss the most about Lori is the morning squeak of a hardwood floor, and says, I've loved you from across the kitchen table and from a thousand miles away. In Ringing in the New Year, he wonders if she ever thinks of him at all, and says, cheap champagne won't dull the pain. He says, you were fool enough to fall in love with me, and we were two tornadoes touching down in the Midwest. In Old Time Feeling, he's come to terms, pretty much, with the fact that Lori's moved on, but he's still the same old me, you know, fucking up the status quo. He says, I'm hoping now where you are, they all think you're a movie star because you're the most famous girl I know. But finally, there's a little glimmer of hope at the end that they might end up together. And empty as a drum, Evan is sitting alone at a bar waiting for Lori to show up. She finally arrives at the very end and jokes, oh, what a mess we've gotten into. But it's like not a joke because it's true. Um, Call a Spade a Spade is this duet between Evan Felker and Jamie Lynn Wilson where the two lovers are reunited after a long time and experience this awkward tension between desire and restraint. Evan says to Lori, um, well you've got a ring, you've got a new last name, but you've got the same old eyes, they're the same, all the same. And something to hold on to, he says, you come smiling through the doorway looking like an old regret. Well, to tell you the truth, I never thought we'd be here again, but he begs her for one last try. So, you know, we're left on this hopeful note, you know? Or it could just be this infinite cycle that keeps going over and over. So that's it for Lori. To me, Lori represents beauty and perfection. She is our wildest dreams, perhaps what we once had in the past, but lost due to our own shortcomings. Just like we never find out if Evan and Lori end up together, we never live perfect lives or become the most perfect versions of ourselves. Instead, we can only be grateful for the past and strive for a better future. So the second most mentioned character is Jimmy, who I think is just some random dude who had a secret thing with Lori. He only comes up in two songs. First we see him in The Funeral, where he's described as a counterfeit James Dean with a pocket full of Delta Blues and cheap amphetamines. He's described as this prodigal son who's an outcast from his family and he returns home to Oklahoma City for his father's funeral and then ends up stealing his father's gun from his grave. Um, this song is super upbeat yet depressing at the same time. I love the lines, there's nothing like family to make you feel so damn alone and his mom asking, why does it take a funeral just to bring you back to town? Then Jimmy comes back in The Mercury, where he is again likened to James Dean. Um, he's described as looking like hell, but he ain't dead yet, rough around the edges, but his clothes are clean. Then we have Doreen, who is this other lover who serves as a complete contrast to Lori. Doreen is this like super hot young chick who Evan meets after his thing with Lori ends, and um, their relationship was kind of built on lust and therefore doomed from the start. While Lori is perfect and Evan is the one who wrongs her and never stops loving her, Doreen is flawed and she is the one who wrongs him and takes advantage of him. He ends up building this anger and resentment towards Doreen, which he never had for Lori and um, definitely no longer loves her. In the song Doreen, we learn that he met her when she was only 17, drinking whiskey sours in the bar but then he later has nightmares about her cheating on him with another man. He tries to seduce her in time of day um, with hillbilly girl, sweet as wine, grew up in a thicket like muscadine. You try to fool me into thinking you're so refined because she's drinking those whiskey sours. Um, he had a friend, maybe Danny, who tries to warn him that she's a bad idea and unrung because she's like only 22. He's like, dude, you got a car that's older than her. <laughs> And then in Wrecked, Evan reflects back on when they were young, wild, and in love, but then Doreen came in and wrecked everything, including his house and his car and his heart, and left all the pieces scattered on the lawn. In Jen Smoke Lies, she cheats on him with this blue-eyed boy in Oklahoma City, and in Gone, 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 Doreen took everything she could steal. She came in like a thief in the night, and he sings, I ran for the hills so you couldn't kill me, but damn, you cut close to the bone. 
So you can tell that she's really caused him a lot of pain and suffering. Outside of Doreen, there's a few songs about just like random girls. In Kansas City Southern, Evan picks up random girls for a night, whether it's Katie or Jenny from down the street, and he observes that, yes, the girl in my dreams each and every night it seems is the one I hold in my arms. But he also wonders, will I ever find my darling again? Who is obviously Lori. <laughs> in Leaving and Lonely, the darker side of Kansas City Southern, Evan wakes up in a motel after a night of drinking and doesn't remember anything. He says, it might have been love, maybe just a good time, it probably was. In Easton and Maine, he sees a random girl in Tulsa on the corner of Easton and Maine and swears that um, she looked right at him and they're meant to be and all he wants is to go back and see her again. In Oklahoma Stars, he lies on the grass for a night with a random girl looking up at the sky and they part ways in the morning. He says, I lead you through the darkness on a night you won't remember. Is everyone that easy? Do they all just play the fool? Are they all just out here looking for a way to break the rules? Finally, there's a few songs about self-discovery and small town life, probably in between the Lorries and the Doreens and the Random Girls. In Shreveport, which I see as a follow-up to Diamonds and Gasoline, Evan is wandering through life, traveling on a Greyhound bus, where he gets arrested and sent to jail, but then there's all these great scenes of small town life, and the main message is you can learn some things down there that they don't teach in school. Um, which I really relate to because there's a lot of things I learned in life that I didn't learn in school. Um, Long Hot Summer Day is such a fun song that describes the ordinary life of a man working on a towboat. Before the Devil Knows is another super upbeat song about death of all things. And it's this honest celebratory reminder of our mortality. It's like, YOLO, raise another glass boys and have another, have another glass because we're all going to die. Um, there's these anecdotes about an old man and a teenage girl dying and then Evan makes it personal and says he's 28 and born in 84. Morgan Street is about a night out on the town where Evan is just a wallflower, so can have knowledge, heart on my sleeve, beer in my hand, while he's observing his friends. Long-haired Josh, who is an alcoholic, Angie, who's trying to be an actress, and Jordan, who played the accordion, for example. Finally, in The Hard Way, Evan is back on the road driving through the wilderness with this deep sense of unrest and loneliness and still trying to figure things out and where he belongs in life. So in conclusion, the magic of the Turnpike Troubadours is that their stories are brutally honest. They're painfully aware of the fact that life is full of pain and suffering and we seldom get what we truly want. However, their music celebrates that with beautiful upbeat fiddle tunes that make you want to dance. It gives us permission to be vulnerable and to admit our flaws and our feelings of being lost and lonely and to find beauty in our shared experiences and connect us closer together. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts on how all of the Turnpike Troubadour songs are connected.